So folks, welcome or welcome back to the channel. And I've met so many things, uh, once you start something, you never know where you're going to end up. And it's the same thing with this David Brown. You might have seen the previous videos on how we changed all the oil, the fuel filters and the hydraulic oil. But then I needed to start building this attachment in the front with this very thick metal panel that I have right here. So I have to put this on here so I can actually install or make a bracket in the front for the hatch trimmer. The problem is that I didn't know how far the bonnet was sticking out. So I had to install the bonnet onto the tractor, first of all. And the problem with the bonnet was that the bottom part was completely rusted away. So I had to weld on a new piece onto that. So this was the bottom part of the bonnet of the tractor. And as you can see, it's completely corroded away or rusted away. So there was no way I could reinstall this. You can even see here where the grill fits, totally gone. So I had to make a new part. And that's the part that we created and roughly welded it on. We still need to clean it all up. Replacing the old part that was actually sitting there. So now I can actually try to fit the uh, bars on the side to install the front bracket to mount the hatch trimmer. So now with the bonnet installed, I can actually put the level up and see how far the bottom bar that we still have to install will have to stick out so where the head stream will start fitting. So now I know all this so I could probably start now creating the bracket in the front but I will not. As you can see the bonnet doesn't look all that good. Somebody painted it with a brush uh, and it's very rough. Uh, even the top part has cuts and, and this grill here which should be a pretty nice grill is kind of dented and bent. The emblem is, is, is really tacky and then we have this grill that goes in the front of it. You know this is a really bent so that we still have to make sure we can install it properly that it hooks in place and all that. So I decided to do a little bit more cosmetics work on this tractor, although that's not going to make it any better, but it will certainly make it look better. So this is what we're going to do in the next video, cleaning up this bonnet completely blasted and painted in and making sure that all these grills that we have here are fitting properly. And that's not the only thing. And as you can see, the wiring is a little bit of a mess. So what I did is I ordered up a new wiring loom for this tractor so we can redo all the electrical cabling on it. Part of the effort will be actually to repaint the chassis and the engine block of the David Brown. Now this one has two colors. It has the red color. It also has the brown color. Um, I'm not sure exactly in what color schemes the 990 came. Uh, I've seen different colors, red and white or brown and white. Uh, so I decided not to make it too obvious, not to make it stick out too much, to go actually for the brown color. So I ordered the paint and so we're going to paint all this uh, very soon. And before we paint it, I'm going to shot blast it slightly, not perfectly because that's not necessary because there's a, still a working tractor. But I like to have it in a decent condition. And the good thing is you can still get all those stickers. So I actually ordered up a brand new sticker for the sides of the bonnet. And as so you can see, there's plenty of dents uh, on the bonnet and you can actually see the paint strokes on this one. And the guy who painted it, he had so much sand or dust in it. It's amazing. It almost looks like he was painting it kind of a stucco paint. But we get all this cleaned up and sprayed. But also the fenders will need some work. You can see how all this is curved and I already started straightening this up a little bit. So this is, will take a little bit more work to straighten that up as much as I can. It ain't going to be perfect, but that's okay. I don't want to have it perfect anyway. Um, it's a working tractor, right? So, but I still want to have it a little bit straightened up because it's really bad. Um, I will have to take off a lot of the stuff. The lights will go off because I've got new lights and I probably will need to weld up these holes that these lights will have uh, so I can just put up the new light. Um, yeah, so all by all, there's a bit of work to be done. Uh, also, the fenders at the inside are kind of rusted away in some areas, so we'll have to patch all that up. Now, I'm not going to take the fenders off right away. I'm just going to try to straighten them out as much as I can first, uh, metal-wise, and then I'm going to take them off to shot blast them and paint them in the paint boot. And it's the same thing for the other fender on the other side. So the fender on the other side is a little bit better. Um, it's not as bent as the other one, but it has holes in there and it has some 
awkward attachments that used to be on there before, so I'm going to take all this off. And also here you'll see some, I don't know what it is, it's kind of like a bolt that was welded on and some silicon. You have rust holes, so we'll have to patch all this up and do some welding. But okay, uh, that's not too bad. Um, these are easy things to repair. So um, I'm going to start now with fixing the grill in the front and then we'll carry on with the fenders. And then um, we're going to take them off and then we're going to sandblast them. And we also will take the bonnet off and sandblast the bonnet. And then finally we're going to paint it all. I have two new sensors ordered and a float for the tank. And also I have two new dials because I don't know what state they are in. And the dials were not that expensive anyway. So that is something else we need to fix and clean up completely. And it's like with anything else, once you start working on something, you never know where you're going to end up. I intended only to do the mechanical work on this tractor and I did and now it's running very smoothly. But now when I look at it, you know, it's like, oh, this is really tacky. Um, I might as well change that as well. So now I'm going to do the bonnet, I'm going to do the fenders and I'm going to give it a completely respray. And we put a new wiring loom in and we put new dials in so the tractor will be as good as new and then we will install the hatch trimmer. So it's going to take a bit longer before I get to old trusty guys, but I want to have this finished because I need this guy to work in the garden very soon. All right, so let's start on the grill. So these little bolts are really a problem to get them off because um, it's all rusted away. So I'm going to grind off the head and then I'm going to drill it out a bit. So that looks about right, so now I can drill it. So that's it. So I think I can fix this grill. It's not too bad. Some models have actually lights in here and that's why you find these holes. So that's already kind of damaged here but on this tractor I have the lights on the side. So I'm going to take all this off and then we're going to get it all cleaned up. And then at the end I'm going to make a cover plate uh, for most of that. It's not rusted through, but it isn't all that pretty either. So yeah, we'll have to clean it up a bit. In fact, this area needs to be pushed back a bit. I can see that. That's where the uh, emblem comes out and I'm just going to renew that one. And it's held in place with a spring. So uh, that's easy. In fact, I already ordered a new emblem. So uh, that shouldn't be no problem. So let's see. I'm not going to hammer it very hard, I just do it little bit by little bit. All right, I think that looks already a whole lot better and should be good enough. Um, and we'll see once we blast the area how much more we need to bend on this. But I think this is starts to look all right. One of this welded up and it appeared, I'm actually going to take it off the tractor again and blast it. These bonnets are fairly heavy to take off and uh, you have to remove a couple of things before you can take them off. There are two bolts at the inside, but also you have to remove the exhaust because that comes through a hole. There we go. Luckily I wasn't bolted down. And now it takes and now it takes a bit of lifting. Now it's handy if you're with two people, but if you're on your own, um, it's yeah, it's a bit of work. 
All right, so. All right. Come off. It's a big bonnet to carry. So we're going to shot blast now the bonnet and to shot blast it I'm going to use the Ibex 9. This is a very handy system to shot blast and I'm going to blast it at 7 bar and here is my gun with a nozzle. It's a 3 millimeter nozzle. It should be going quite easy and quite well without making too much damage and for media I'm using Garnet 360 which is a very very fine grit. The only thing you got to make sure of is that it is very dry and otherwise it will clog up. You also need to use a dryer on your compressor so the air doesn't get condensation inside the hoses because otherwise you have another problem. Now that should be good enough. So we can start. So let's do some blasting and uh, always wear protective wear. Finally the bonnet is now bare metal so now it's time to clean it up a bit further. I still have to take some dents out here and there and then we're going to put some putty up uh, to make it more smooth in certain areas. Of course I'm not going to make it showroom condition but I still want to have it corrected where I can correct it. So that is quite smooth. I don't need to sand it down again. I will still have to degrease it before we put the base coat up but that's about it. I can't say I really regret uh, that I'm finished blasting because it took me two hours and it was a pretty dirty job. This area is a bit more uh, uneven so I will have to smoothen that out and there's a couple of um, dents here but there's also some parts that are sticking out so those I'm going to smoothen up with the hammer just a little bit. So that should be good enough and the rest we will actually smoothen out with some putty. Nevertheless, uh, I think it now looks pretty good and very smooth. I could have done it faster with a different grit, uh, but I used a 360 grit, which is very fine. If I would have gone for a more corrosive grit, they would have gone faster, but then the finish wouldn't have been like this. I'm going to use my rubber hammer first. Try to straighten it up as much as I can and it wouldn't block on the block on the side. And now I'm gonna try to support it and kind of like trying to get it as flat as I can. I think I'm getting pretty close. All right, I think this is probably good enough. To take out the small dents, I'm using a polyester putty, which is rather soft and fine. And this is this green one. But for the deeper holes, and in fact where I have little holes of little rust holes, I'm using a lead replacement putty. And that's that one, you can see the difference. So I'm going to start with the soft one, and you need to have a catalyzer with it. And some spatels. Now, I use plastic pieces of an old box. It's pretty flexible because I want to go around the contours. Uh, you can buy these spatels if you want, but I'm always cutting out my own pieces out of it old box or something like this. So um, let's start and see. Let me get some. Not too much because otherwise I can't really use it in full. I'm going to give it a, oops, 
a little bit of catalyzer. It wasn't smart, was it, to drop it, but it happens. How do they say that in English? Ah, I'm not going to say it. Make sure you mix it well, because otherwise you're going to have soft spots when you put it on, and you don't want that. It has to harden out completely. So, all right. I think this is about right. So I'm going to apply it. So unfortunately, my camera was done. But what you want to do is apply it as straight as you can, and you curve your spatel or whatever you want to call it to the contours of the part that you're trying to correct. Uh, you don't have a lot of time to do this and don't worry if you don't get it right from the first time. You let it dry and then you apply a second coat. All right. That will do it for now and then we're gonna sand it and finish it off. It takes about 15 to 30 minutes for the polyester putty to get hard. It all depends on how much hardener you put into the, the putty itself. So now it's time to sand it. Um, so I'm going to sand it with a grid 120 to begin with. Normally I would start with a 60, but I don't have a 60 for the moment. I ran out of them. So I'm going to sand it with a grid 120. And for that I'm going to use an electrical uh, sander. Uh, you can use a pneumatic one if you want. And then uh, we're going to probably put a second coat up, sand it again, put a third coat up until we really got it smooth and the way we want to have it. Now I'm going to put my glasses on because without it I see deadly squat. All right, so let's start. <laughs> slowly getting there but you can see we still have a lot of deep areas which we have to fill up and uneven areas so it's certainly going to need a second coat. You might have noticed that I've taken these lights off because I have new lights for this but when I took the lights off then I noticed that this area right here is really um, worn out. Uh, it's, it's too wide as well and it's, it's kind of rusted away. They already had a washer in the back. So what I'm going to do now is to cut this out like so and then put another piece of metal in it. So this is going to be a little bit of welding and that's okay because the polyester putty is still drying up. Uh, so uh, meanwhile we will weld up this little area. So the way we're going to fix this area is by actually cutting out an area and then welding in another piece of metal. So I'm just gonna go and check uh, if this piece is actually going to fit. So, and I think it will. So we will actually cut it that way. And in terms of depth, I think I will cut it right here. So um, I'm gonna cut this piece first and then we'll cut out the piece actually on the bonnet. So here's the piece we have just cut to size and now I'm going to place it on there and trace it with a fine pen so I know exactly what to cut out. Now I don't want to cut on the lines, I want to cut on the inside of the lines because otherwise the hole will be too big. And I'm going to use a very thin cutting wheel. the edges a bit. I had to trim it here and there so now this panel should fit quite nicely and it does and I'm going to hold it in place with these big magnets that's very handy to weld. There we go and then you just need to push it a little bit until it's flush. That's good so now I can 
tack weld it here and then we do the other side. I have, I have the panel tagged in place but I'm not going to do a continuous weld. I'm going to do little spots at a time because otherwise I will deform the panel way too much. And that's almost done. I see one more spot I need to do and then we can grind it down. So that looks good enough. So now I'm going to apply some putty on that. And then finally I will drill the hole once I have the lights. So this is the grill of the tractor and there's a metal bar in the middle which I tried to clean up but it really looks tacky. So what I'm going to do is to create a new one. So I'm going to cut this off of the grill and then we go in to bend a new piece of metal in the same form and then actually weld it back on there while the putty uh, on the bonnet is still drying. So. See. Quite easy. All right, here we go. So this is the thing we're going to recreate. Um, I might make it a little bit higher up. I, I think it would look better if it was a little bit more up. But let's see. So the way I'm going to do this is by taking a piece of sheet metal mark the length and then actually um, measure the width of this and the side here and then add it all up and I'm going to mark it out on this sheet metal and then we'll bend it. Here is the panel so I'm going to cut it. I mark the lines this one bending line, a second bending line and a cut line. I'm just going to align it now so I can cut it properly. All right, and here is the piece. Uh, that looks good. So now we're going to bend it. So I'm going to use the bench to bend it. Um, and this, by the way, is a very cheap bench. Um, so I just need to align it. And I don't know how far I'm going to go. I think this is probably about as far as I want to go. So let's see. Yeah, I like it uh, under an angle like this. It doesn't have to be bended all the way. So now let's do the second side. So I think this is about the bend I wanted to get. So let's see. And I think this looks pretty good. So that's what I'm going to use. Here's the new panel. So the bonnet is now ready to be painted, but before I'm going to paint it, I'm just going to try to fit the grill that we fixed before. Remember that we were welding this bar in the middle? Now let's see if that fits. And that seems like it's going to be a good fit. Uh, I already painted it a little bit. Uh, of course, we still have to paint the middle bar, but I think this looks a lot better than what it was. The bonnet is ready. I have it sanded down and it's ready to be painted. Now I'm not going to paint it like I normally paint a car because this is not a car and it's not a showroom tractor. It is a working tractor and therefore I'm going to use different paint. Paint which is a bit cheaper. 
To begin with, I'm going to give it a primer, and this is an anti-rust primer, and it takes a bit of time to have it really dry, about 12 hours. So it is not like normal paint. Uh, if you do it on a car, I would use epoxy paint on bare metal. But in this case, I, I use this uh, different type of paint, which is a primer, really good uh, against rust and things like this. And we call this often agriculture paint. I have some um, solvent with it because I want to make it liquid enough so I can spray it. I'm probably going to spray it around uh, 1.5 to 2 bar and a 1.2, 1.5 uh, opening on my spray gun. And once that is done and when it's painted, and you'll see that in a few seconds uh, or minutes once I get to it, then I'm going to let it dry for 12 hours and then we'll apply the real paint. Now the paint that I have is, again, as you can see, agriculture paint. And that paint, uh, I will add some hardener to it, and I also will have to dilute it, and then we spray that. Now, that also takes a bit longer than normal paint. So this is a what we call a one-component paint. So you paint it maybe one, two, three coats, but you have to color right away. It is finished right away, so you don't have a varnish at the end. Now, some people use varnish and a base coat, but I'm not going to use this because, again, like I said, this is a working tractor. I have two colors, actually. I have the David Brown white and I have the David Brown uh, brown. Um, and this is pretty good paint, uh, I have to say. But you'll see all that very soon. The brown will be for the chassis, the white one will be for the bonnet. We're going to paint now the bonnet in the primer. So the first thing we're going to do now is to wipe it clean. And for that I'm using some of the solvent and some clean rags, uh, specifically for cleaning uh, the bodywork of a car uh, before painting. So. So folks, we are done with the primer and now I'm going to let it dry for about 12 hours and then I'm going to apply the white paint. The primer has dried for 12 hours, so now we can actually start sanding it down again to make it smooth just in case we have some uneven areas, but it looks overall pretty nice and clean. Uh, this primer is working pretty well. I have a few imperfections here and there uh, where we had pitted marks in the steel uh, because it was rust before and I did not fill all that up but that's okay because again as I said this is a working tractor so now uh, we're going to smooth that up and I probably should be using a sanding block uh, to have a smoother and flat the surface so I don't get the marks from my fingers all right so it's time for our final coat of paint of David Brown White. I've got the paint right here, and this is the agriculture paint, as I mentioned before. I will have to dilute it with about 5 to 10 percent of solvent, and I'm going to add about 5 to 10 percent of hardener in it. How much that is on your paint, that depends a bit on the type of paint you have, so check your data sheet. Now, before I do that, I'm going to shake it real well. So you want to make sure that all the pigments are very well spread around in the paint so you have uh, the proper color because these pigments might sink down in the paint if you leave the um, paint container sitting there for a while. Also make sure that your paint is at operating temperature or room temperature so like 22, 23 degrees centigrade is great for paint that will just work fine. So uh, let me get my glasses and we're going to start mixing. So I'm going to take about 450 milliliters of paint and then we'll dilute it with 10% and another 10% or 5% hardener. That depends a bit. All right, so let's do that. So this is now the uh, solvent and I'm going to give it like probably 10%. I've got to check the thickness, how that is. So let me give it, yeah. I think that's about right. So now it's a matter of stirring it well. 
nothing until the paint looks about right in thickness. Now you can measure this with a special uh, cup with a specific opening, but I never do. After a while you get used to this kind of mixing of paint. So um, I'm going to put a bit of hardener into it. Now hardener reduces the life of the paint. Keep that in mind. So the pot life that is. Um, well, let's see. This looks about right and this pot of paint will be enough for the bonnet. Now I'm going to pour it into the paint gun and for that I always use a filter. Uh, you never know what kind of uh, particles you have in it. You don't want to have your paint gun being clogged up. Now my cup on the paint gun is about 500 milliliters and so is this cup in my hand so we should be all right. It's almost done. All right, so let's go and paint it. I'm just having a look all over the bonnet and I think that looks quite good actually. Um, there are some areas with a little bit of dense especially this area here you can see the reflection in the paint how that line of my LED lights becomes a little wobbly and that's because there was serious damage in this site and I haven't bothered cleaning it all up or straightening it all up but overall I think the result is very satisfactory so folks this is it for this video but keep watching because there's more to come on the big cleanup of the David Brown and there's a lot of things we still have to fit and paint. We're going to install new gauges. But not only that, we will also install new sensors for temperature and oil pressure. Some new light switches. We're having the new emblems that will go on the bonnet. And then we have a new wiring loom. Here is the wiring loom and this is stuff we all have to fit in. And of course we've got the brand new stickers that will go on the side of the bonnet. And we can't be missing the lights. I still have some lights on order. These are the rear lights. The lights in the front haven't arrived yet. I expect them today. So as you can see, there's still going to be a lot of work on this tractor. Besides the fact that we still have to fix uh, the fenders and we also have to fix and paint the whole chassis and the engine. And that's most likely going to be the next job that you're gonna see uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, painting the chassis, painting the engine, and repairing the fenders and then finally we'll do all the electrical work and the nice easy stuff to put the emblem up and the stickers.